Authentic expression technology allows you to morph continuously between the timbral characteristics of multiple samples. This works by imprinting frequency responses from one sample onto another. In today's video tutorial, we'll take a look at how we can morph a kick into a snare with authentic expression technology. Never miss a tutorial by subscribing to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ADSRtoots. The core of AET is an FFT filter with a very high resolution, which is able to imprint frequency responses of almost any complexity on your signal. These frequency responses are derived from other samples in your instrument via spectral analysis. For instance, the currently playing velocity layer could be filtered with the spectral information of the layer just above it to sonically shift it closer to it. And by dynamically varying the amount of processing with the help of, modu of a modulation source, you can thereby pass through any number of intermediate stages between the two samples, thus morphing between them in real time. And this process is not limited to dynamic layers either. You can morph between different playing techniques of an instrument or even between different signals. So to show you how to use AET, we'll take a kick and morph its sonic characteristics into a snare. First, create a new instrument, enter edit mode, and open the mapping editor. Next, find a kick and drag it into the mapping editor. I like that one. Next, add your snare in the same manner making sure it has the same velocity range, key range, and root as the kick. Basically, it will be overlapping. And if you're having trouble seeing overlapping ranges, use a list view. Now move each zone into its own group by selecting all of them with Control A and use the edit menu. What you want is move each zone into its own group clone. Now disable edit all groups. Enable selected groups only and show the monitor groups tab in the browser. Rename each group by double clicking on its name in the groups tab. Since we added the snare last, the snare is on top. All right, so select the kick group in the groups tab, and in the mapping editor, select the zone, and in the edit menu, choose create AET morph layer. In the create morph layer window, Give the layer a name. We'll call it kick. The option tonal analyzes each sample harmonically in relation to the fundamental frequency of its respective root key value. You should only turn it off if your sample is non-tonal, such as noise or percussion, or if the root key is wrong. Since our kick is percussive, we'll disable it. Root key shift will offset the root key if you are purposely using the incorrect key in the zone. So this will allow you to get back to the proper key if we were using tonal material. And the analysis range allows you to set the range of analysis. You want to select a section that has the most characteristic frequency spectrum and exclude the rest. So we'll just dial this down just a little bit. And also the number of zones that is selected is displayed below. So when you're finished, click OK. Now select a snare group and repeat the process. Now select edit, open AT Morph Map Editor. In the Create Mor Morph Map window, name the map Kick to Snare and click Add. The drop-down menu contains morph maps that already exist. To delete a morph map, 
select it in the menu and click remove. At the bottom of the AT Morph Map Editor are layers in the currently selected morph map on the left and layers that can be added on the right. Add the kick layer by selecting it in the right window and clicking the left arrow to add it to the left window. Add the snare as well. The order matters as the morph map will process the layers in a sequential pattern. So the morph will go, go from the kick to the snare. And if it was in reverse, it will go from the snare to the kick. So this is the way we want it, kick to snare. The right arrow button removes the layer from the map. The delete button lets you delete the layer completely and the rebuild button will reopen the create morph layer dialog for the currently selected layer which allows you to readjust its analysis parameters. Choose articulation morph multiple layers because we are morphing between different sounds. If you wanted to do a velocity morph all zones will be in the same single layer and we would choose velocity morph single layer and click OK. Now close the mapping editor and select the snare group and turn the volume down to zero. This ensures that the snare doesn't sound by accident. This would give us undesired results if it sounded at the same time as a morph. If you want a snare in your instrument, duplicate the snare, the snare zone and put it on a different key. Select the kick group and add an AT filter to the group insert effect slot. In the Morph Map drop-down menu, choose the map we created, press the key on your MIDI controller or contact keyboard and the kick will sound. And the filter curve graph and the morph curve graph will be populated. To edit the currently selected morph map, click the Edit Morph Map button. The filter curve graph represents the currently active filter response, which is different, which is the difference between the analyzed frequency response of the source and the target. The morph curve view is a graphical representation of the selected morph map and a resulting filter gradient. It's divided up into multiple color coded sections and curves. The morph knob sets the filter to any point in the morph gradient that combines and connects the filter responses required to achieve the various timbers of the morph layers with smooth transitions. This should be modulated or automated. The amount knob adjusts the amount of filter that influences the signal. The filter has no effect at zero. Map the morph knob to the model wheel on your MIDI controller by displaying the MIDI automation and dragging CC1 to the morph knob. If your MIDI controller's model wheel isn't on CC1, move it and look for the red lightning bolt in the MIDI automation tab. Now play your kick while moving the model wheel and hear your kick morph into a snare in real time. AET closes the gap for playing dynamic instruments in a realistic manner. And with options for multiple morph layers, you can switch between different articulations or different sounds altogether. This makes for some interesting sound design. And for a more dynamic effect, modulate the morph knob with velocity or an envelope instead. And don't forget to check out our website at www.contacttutorials.com for more contact tutorials and sounds. ADSR Contact Tutorials, Supercharge Your Contact Skills. This is DJ Nice signing off until next time. Now go make some music.